You know, I look at our unemployment rate consistently being double that of folks in, in white America. I do understand that to some degree there's a level of racism that we all have to overcome, and I get all of that. But that doesn't mean every single issue is race related. Sometimes it is about how you, how, how you represent yourself. It is about how you present yourself. When I alluded to walking around with your pants hanging below your behind, uh, that's trifling. That's just trifling, and it's counterproductive. SAGIN has become a very sensitive issue among young men and public as a whole. Uh, if you look at the history of SAGIN, uh, some people were uh, quick to point out that SAGIN started in the prison and that it was uh, uh, homosexually uh, addressed it was their calling card, and they used that as a way to try to sway the young guys from sagging. Personally, I don't like it, but each generation has something that's a signature for the generation, whether it be rap, whether it be afros, whether it be sagging. Uh, I'm quickly reminded of fads and fashions. Fashions are slow to change, fads come and go. So, I remember them saying that rap was a fad. It wasn't gonna be around. Well, heck, that was 30 years ago. It's still here. Sagging, if you notice, it's slowly going away. As long as the young guys understand that there's a time and place, okay? That when you're with the boys, when you're with uh, your age group, and you're having fun, partying, whatever, then if it's accepted it within your group, fine. But if you're in a professional setting or if you're in a job market, you can't do that. And knowing the difference between the two is half the battle. But me personally, no, I don't, I don't like sagging. And it's a generational thing. Each generation has, as I said earlier, has something that is a signature. Uh, you take my brother's uh, my oldest brother is 10 years older. Or you take my uncle, who is, what, 50, 40 years older. The way that they wore their clothing and the way we wear our clothing and the way my children wear their clothing is completely different. For example, the belt line. My generation goes about neighbor, high. My uncle then would pull it above, almost like a Pee Wee Herman. And they always buttoned their top button. That was their generational thing. With us, the top button was open and we even at one point wore the big collars, okay? This generation is doing a lot of throwback. They think that they're inventing some of these things, but we did it in the 60s and 70s. So the more things change, the more things remain the same. Everything that will happen has already happened and will happen again. Therefore, there is nothing new under the sun. Everyone always wants to know, are there aliens among us? Yes, there are aliens among us. They try to disguise themselves with our clothing, but you can recognize them by their long bodies and short legs. During my school career, I've lost 10 pounds. Um, I was size 34, I'm a size 32. Um, good belts are hard to find. Um, my pants fall down below my waist. And it's a pet peeve of mine that guys should keep their pants on their waist. Um, I don't enjoy looking at your butt cracks and I'm sure you don't want to see mine. Uh, the purpose today for sagging is because I feel like I have nothing to do and I'm just out being comfortable. 
If I'm sagging, you know, if anything, it's the 45. The 45 make me sag. This right here is enough. But see, this, this is enough right here. Just a little bit. Just that, just that much right there is enough. But like way under, way down here and stuff, I don't do that. Because I can't even walk like that. You know what I'm saying? So I mean, it's just really just a swag thing. You know, just a little loose about yourself. You know, make yourself just a little comfy. Not too comfy. I know he's, my daddy said make it look like I shitted on myself, but it, I mean, it don't always look like that. I mean, sometimes it look kind of nice, especially when you got a nice t-shirt that, you know, come over. You know, you can't see my whole backpack. You can see some of it, though. You know. See, you gave me a million dollars to keep my pants up. I probably keep my pants and your pants up. <laughs> oh yeah, I keep them up like this all you want to for a million dollars. A million dollars, I keep it over my belly button like this. Every day. So on my knees. Every day for a million bucks. I would too. I mean, who wouldn't do it for a million dollars? Recently, two men were arrested for refusing to pull up saggy pants at a Waffle House. They were arrested on disorderly conduct charges for allegedly causing quite a stir with regards to their attire. The 22-year-old men were patronizing a Waffle House in Spartanburg, South Carolina when they were asked by the establishment security guard to pull up their saggy pants because their boxes were far too exposed. When the pair reportedly refused to comply with the guard's request, sheriff's deputies were summoned. When sheriff's deputies arrived at the establishment to speak to them, the officers were allegedly met with hostility. Well, like I said, first of all, I feel like they weren't arrested for sagging their pants. They were arrested for their reactions for, for being asked to leave. But when it comes down to it, what do you really want to do? Pull your pants up or go to jail? Obvious sign is to pull your pants up and be served. Everybody has a sign that says right to refuse service. Either follow the rules or don't go in. As a teacher, I'd much rather use my three strikes warning and things for other than your pants hanging down. And there's a sanitary issue. And then I wonder how much water is your mother wasting doing the laundry when you're wearing three pairs of pants every day? And it's just disrespectful. You know, discipline should be about things like talking or being naughty or stuff. Just pull your pants up. Although sagging is popular among students when they're hanging out with their friends, it's inappropriate for students to sag in the classroom. For one, sagging shows students underwear. It's not proper for students to walk around in a public setting such as a classroom showing their underwear. There are rules of conduct that students and teachers should follow and there are also dress codes that they should follow. Plus. When female students show their panties or bras, they are stereotyped as loose or disrespectful, or as many students would say, a thought, meaning that hoe over there. <laughs> so then it only makes sense that male students not show their underwear or drawers or butt crack or anything that's derogatory to someone else, especially in the classroom. Another reason sagging by students is inappropriate is because it shows a disrespect for authority in the classroom. Teachers are adults and many are parents or even grandparents. Therefore, students should res show respect to their teachers the same way as they would show respect to their parents or even grandparents. Students always say they want to be respected by authority, yet they should be willing to give respect themselves. The biggest reason sagging is inappropriate in the classroom is because it's a distraction to the learning environment. For example, 
students sometimes giggle when other students walk like pigeons into the classroom. <laughs> students also giggle when their peers walk like pigeons to the front of the classroom. This can distract members in the class because they will maybe sometimes take their mind away from what the teacher is saying and on to paying attention to the student's underwear, maybe the color of the student's underwear or the type of underwear the student had on. They may even start thinking about the student walking like a pigeon, which again, if pigeons aren't the subject of the class discussions at that time, then focusing on how pigeons walk in comparison to how their peers were walking would not be appropriate. As a whole, sagging is inappropriate for students in the classroom because it shows their underwear, it's disrespectful to authority, and it's a distraction to the learning environment. Well, first of all, I would pull my son to the side and reiterate what we've already been teaching him is that sagging your pants is inappropriate for public viewing. Uh, if he decided that he want to get outside uh, my command and sag his pants somewhere, then I would pull him up, pull him to the side, take him home, and punish him accordingly because we don't sag our pants. What's under our pants is our business. Son sags, and I don't like it. it, it to me, it just, it's, not, it's not a nice look for a young man to show his underwear. Now he'll wear a pair of shorts and have another pair of shorts up under. That's, to me, it's look hot. You look hot, it look like it's gonna be, I'm gonna say it, it look like it's gonna be funky. So I don't, I don't see the point of doing it. That's just me. I'm old school. I always wore my pair of pants, my belt. So that's just me, that's just what happened. But I want them every day about it. And I don't like it. I try to keep my pants oh, wow. up on my hip because I, I got my little son right there and I don't want him trying to sag and everything, so I'm totally against sagging too. No, I don't. It is very bad and girls, when they come up, they'll be like, oh, why are you but why are you sagging? So, I don't like sagging. Um, no, I wear contemporary clothes. Uh, this is actually a little uncomfortable for me. I just like to look professional at work, but no, I do not sag when I'm with my friends. No, I don't. I don't. I mean, I got, I got children, I got nephews, and I don't want them to see it come from me. Now, if they decide to do it, it's because it's, it's they got it from out there, not here. You know, um, I want to be the best positive role model I can be toward them, you know. Sagging is a sign of immaturity. It's a pet peeve of mine. I do not like to see men, especially our black boys and men, especially grown men, hang underwear hanging out. And I think that it, it looks very uncomfortable. I don't see how they could walk around all day gap leg. And if they had to, they probably would complain about it. I just, it's really nonsense to me. Turn off definitely a turn off. No one wants to be seen with anyone whose pants is below their butt. I'm glad that they passed the law for sagging because not only is it disrespectful to yourself but also to other people and it really makes you look very horrible. It makes you look that, that thug, it gives you that thug mentality and so um, I let my kids know I, I can't stand it. My boys, I make sure there is zero tolerance and I wish that our young men would learn to respect their sales as well as others. You talking to me? Wow. Okay, today in America, we are plagued with a, a I would say an epidemic. The problem with the young, uh, man, the sagging culture, so to speak, 
is one of the saddest things to happen. We really don't um, have a true understanding of this new uh, thing for sagging, this new culture of sagging, simply because it it's almost degrading to witness a young man get out of a vehicle or walk into a room and it grabs everyone's attention because their their underwear is showing and and their pants is almost is under their butt so to speak you know it's the worst thing we could have ever adopted as the as a, a cool thing so to speak and the problem i have with it is i don't want to see your drawers and and it and coming from where i understood the 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 origin, it was a sign of homosexuality, but now you have older men actually trying to be younger and they're wearing their pants down as well. It's the worst thing we could have ever adopted. It's not like the Afros back in the days that represented uh, a, a black pride, not black power, but black pride and being proud of being of African descent. It's nothing like that. It's, it's degrading and I think it should be stopped at all costs. I don't know what they can do to stop it, but it's the it's it's not a good sign. The reason why I don't say because the people I deal with they don't say. The uh, secondly, I don't like to have to constantly grab on my pants and my trousers and pull them up. That's why you you wear a belt and, and things of that nature. Another type of is when you wear a nice outfit or a decent suit, have your pants pulled up, when you're dealing with uh, on a professional level, or just a regular, just dealing with anybody, the, the average person, when you're talking to a person with a nice jacket on or so, not only do they respect you, but it, it's the perception as though you respect them as well because you took the time out to put on a jacket just to speak to them. So you, not only do you champion yourself, but you're championing that, that same person, the person you're actually speaking to. And that's the reason why you should always present yourself or in a, I would say, a clean or in a fashionable manner. I do not encourage no young person to sag. And now I see females sagging. It's the worst thing could ever we could ever adopt it. So if I could do anything, I would pass a law to abolish sagging throughout the United States. It is not a, a proud American tradition. Thank you. Um, I think it shows uh, a lack of education. I think if more people knew where sagging originated or what it means as far as advertising, they will be less likely to sag. And I also think that it just shows a lack of class. We don't want to see your underwear. I don't want their undergarment. They're called undergarments for a reason, so they should not be seen. I've, I've schooled them a couple times. Now, whether they took it and ran with it or not, but I, I've schooled them about it. You know, um, can't say what, what they're going to do with it, but I, I have talked to them about it. So, yeah, it came from prison. And it was an undercover way for the fags to let them know whether or not they were, you know, giving it up or whatever, you know. And that's the why, the reason I try to tell my my son and my nephew, you know, that's not what you want to do, you know. But right now it seems like to be the hottest thing out here. So they 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 finding their own way. But I did tell them, you know, what the reason why not to do. It. Okay, so. Where did sagging really come from? Did it come from prison or did it come from slavery? People who study such trends offer two main versions of how this subculture originated. One states that during American slavery, some white masters would rape their African male slaves and after the criminal deeds were consummated, the victims were forced to wear their pants sagging so that their masters could identify them for future pleasures. In other words, the humanized black slaves were sagging pants were said to be announcing that they were available for their white masters. Over time, the style became a little talked about subculture that seeped into general black culture. The other version says the fashion developed in prison among black convicts. In prison, you aren't allowed to wear belts to prevent self-hanging 
or the hanging of others. They take the belt and sometimes your pants hang down. Many cultures of the prison have overflowed into the community, unfortunately. Those who pull their pants down the lowest and show their behind a little more raw, that was an invitation. Warning for the new generation of inmates. They might be asking for trouble from old timers. You know, they got this thing where they say they paint past their butt. It's a style, they call it some sort of gangster style. You know, it's sexy to us, right? And see, but they want to proud for this, right? So you say your pants in her, man, somebody be up in your butt. A Pine Bluff alderman going to the extreme tonight to not only improve the image of his city, but teenagers as well. The problem, according to him, these saggy pants. Good evening, I'm Kevin Kelly. Donna is off. Fox 16's Hillary Hunt spoke with the man who was trying to outlaw this so-called fashion statement that, if passed, would come with a hefty fine. 